You guys have asked, and we promised the next chance we get to get a different style griddle, we will do it. Lo and behold, the new Weber griddle. Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Today is all about the unboxing, the build, and we're going to season the bad boy. You guys stay tuned. Quick little backstory. Uh, growing up, my dad had Weber kettles. Uh, that's actually how I learned my passion or my cooking from outside cooking was because we always had Weber kettles. I have one still today. I've had everything from an 18 inch, um, the 22 inch. I've had the performer, uh, and now we've got the um, the Weber Summit charcoal grill. So this is the Weber griddle. And like I said, I teased in the intro. I told the griddle group, you guys kind of the help us along the way. Uh, when we got rid of our camp chef, what was the next avenue? We love the idea of testing the waters, testing the new equipment. Um, I bought this with my own money. So I know some out there kind of get uh, upset when somebody sends something for free because they don't feel like it's honest. This is about as honest as you can get. So today we're gonna unbox it, put it together, season it, give you my first thoughts, how sturdy it is, how well the seasoning goes, the features that are on it. Without further ado, Let's put it together. All right, guys, there you go. She's put together. Uh, it took us about an hour and a half. Like anything else, we could put the second one together, lickety split, uh, just words of wisdom. When you're trying to put something together on the deck that has holes in it, something's gonna fall and you're gonna lose it forever. Uh, not a big deal. We'll be able to get through it. Uh, it's put together, so I'm just gonna run through basically my experiences, uh, what I like about it, uh, what I don't like about it. Um, I can already just tell the first thing that the, the first thing I got to get out of the way is a lackluster appearance. Probably more disappointed. I know not everything should be based on appearance. Obviously, I'm married, but, <laughs> but the point is, it looks like a toy. I don't really know how to say it. Like I know it's only four hundred fifty dollars, but for some people, that's a lot of money. When you get up in the higher end Webers, you got all the stainless steel, you got all the bling, the bling, and I know it's not about everything. It's how it cooks. But when it's on your back deck and you got friends over, I just can't help thinking it looks like a toy I'd set up for my girls from Little Tykes or something. You know, that that's just my appearance. That's just what I think. So, put it together. Uh, like anything, it was pretty easy. I actually like the way they did the, the package um, A, B, C, D with all the screws that you would need at the time. Uh, very straightforward. I think it's solid once it's put together. Uh, we're just gonna go over some of the things. Obviously, you got the bottom shelf. Um, you guys know that when I have a griddle, I like the idea of four wheels because it's easier to move. Even the wheels don't even Weber on them. You can put a little cap right there. Um, I mean, I guess it's got the logo there, but I don't know. It's just plastic. I, yeah. Okay. The metal. The metal. Uh, I know those legs thicker than what I expected. Um, this is galvanized. One thing I don't like about this, you can't. They're, these are screwed in, so you're not going to be able to take these down and store them if you needed, you know, to create that extra space. Um, all three of the burners are going to light each individual unit. The grease tray is extremely sturdy. It's a little bit larger. Um, that is nice. Yep. Uh, it's a front grease trap right here. Uh which is uh, similar to the Pit Boss. So, you know, we're already used to that. Um, they do have the metal slots here to protect some of the heat. You can already see the label there because, you know, the sides of the griddles get extremely hot. Um, there's not much to it. Uh, the, the lid that comes with it, or the hood, is already attached like that. That's how it comes. It's extremely, uh, ex extremely thin. Um, it feels more like a piece of heavy duty plastic i'm sure it is metal but i wouldn't bet my bottom dollar that uh i don't i wouldn't be putting this over a hot griddle that's uh that's so for sure it's probably not meant to use as like a hood for cooking I, I, it's probably just more of a cover maybe they have more information than i do but this is extremely thin like I, I i i i wouldn't necessarily use it for steaming and doming and put it over my griddle when i was hot, when it's hot so that's the walkthrough well it says top cover must be open when main burner is in operation. So it's a well, cover and not a dome. Yeah, um, there, there's no bells and whistles. Like when we're talking about features, you got some hooks right here to hang your utensils and that's it. 
Um, it does seem like the griddle top itself uh, has already been seasoned or coated with something. It doesn't look like it's raw uh, and have to start from scratch. When we looked online, Weber uh, recommended to season it three times when we go through that process. Just to get a quick tape out, because I know I'm going to get pit people asking. So to the bottom is about 32 and a quarter. Through the top of the uh, metal is what, 35 inches? 35 and a quarter. Okay. Maybe. And then shelf to shelf. I really didn't feel like there was a need to wait for the 36 inch. It looked like it was the same one, just bigger. It's 53 inches wide. And the griddle itself is 28 and a quarter by 18. All right, so even though the grease trap is on this side, we've got three full independent burners. It looks like, from what I can see, now this might be a positivity, that we got holes here, holes here and holes here on each one of them which makes me believe this is where the uh, the gas would come out of. So we might not have, we might have a little bit more even heating. That's that's important. We're going to get to that once we start seasoning it up. So that's nice to see the independent burners. Um, as far as I can tell, I do not think this levels itself. Um, or there's no... There's no leveling mechanism. Um, the feet... This is an extremely light unit. Um, lightweight. Yeah, lightweight. Um, uh, when we talk about the four wheels, because we have to move so much equipment all the time, it just gets overbearing sometimes. Um, even though this only has two wheels that roll, it's very lightweight, um, easy to move if that's the pro if that's necessary. But you know, the shelves do not fold down, which is fine. Uh, but it is just is what it is. I mean, this is basically, I feel like this is the absolute basic nutshell of a griddle. I'm just surprised this is what they came out with, with how popular griddles are. Um, but you know what? We're going to season up, check the hot spots, and uh, go from there. You guys ready? Yep. Now the fun part. I got all the other junk out of the way, so here we go. Just a little soap and water. It's recommended. I guess it's got a pre-oil on there, so we're just going to give that a good wipe. We're going to clean it with water, wash it down with water, get it dried a little bit. All right, the propane tank's on. Initial liftoff. I'm gonna shoot right at it like a medium low. Just let it come up to temp a little bit. Now straight from the owner's manual, which is something I'm very intrigued in because it flat out says it, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You can use one or two burners at a time. You do not have to use three burners at a time. Personally, I think that's very key when it comes to heat management. We'll be playing around with that. And we will be using the uh, infrared gun today. After going over the manual, I think there's some very important notes that need to be said that I'm extremely excited about. We shall see. One thing that was definitely all through the notes, we talked about the hood earlier. It says, do not use while, you're, while your griddle's on. Don't even put it on while your griddle's hot after you've done cook. So just, I, I knew I knew it had to do some, I mean, it, you could just tell. So that's a big key. Now here's some exciting news. <clears throat> I'm skeptical. But it says it in the manual, and I know we all have our own opinions. I'm a big believer in preheating on low. Weber says preheat to the temperature you want your food to be. So if you want to cook on low, preheat to low. If you want to cook on high, go ahead and turn it to high. And you can use one burner. It does not say that you have to use that one burner on low. It says you can use one burner 
or two burners and keep the other one completely off. To me, that they come out and completely say it, I think is is uh, is very well. It, it, it's very well said. It's very well done. There's no confusion. So with the warpage that goes on with griddles, it seems to me like they might have found maybe a loophole. Who knows? But we're going to give it a shot. Well, we ain't try to warp it. But we're definitely going to put it through its paces. It's warming up right now. It is on high. Four forty, four thirty-five on the very left. You're right, right in the middle. Four twenty, and on the right side, four thirty. Four forty, four twenty, four thirty. The one thing I'm curious about is to see after um, I've said between my camp chef, my Blackstone, and my pit boss, even on low, it gets too hot, right? You have to gauge when you cook eggs, when you cook pancakes, because the griddle keeps building heat. With this, we'll see. All right, today I'm gonna use avocado oil. It said you could use a neutral oil, canola, vegetable, grape seed. I'm gonna use avocado oil, that's what I've got. Remember when you're seasoning something, we've went over it several times. Notice now, I just wanna make a big difference. We are not sanding this surface like we did on the Blackstone. The reason is the Blackstone was completely raw metal. Even though it doesn't say it, I can guarantee you that there's something on this metal for protection and it is not 100% raw. So since they've got something on there, I'm not messing with it. We can work the, uh, the roughness out as we cook and it's actually not bad. I've, I've felt a lot worse. So just gonna apply a thin coat of oil Wait till it kind of uh, slows down, burns off. Wait till the smoke slows down. Yeah. Don't forget your sides. Right now, you can see how much smoke we're rolling. This is very, very fillless. I would not say that's, that's hot. That's cool. I would say if you keep something here, you can feel the heat coming out from underneath it. This, yeah, this is very cool. But this is cool. That, that, that's it's almost like cool. because maybe they have this like a paint, like it's almost like a painted well, surface. Well, they've got the gaps there and it's in a housing. That's kind of like what their talking, part, talking points were. But so far, it's very cool. And by this time, if it was going to be hot, it'd be hot. 523, 520, 515. So very even, actually. In the corners, way up in the corner. 350, way up in the corner. 350, that's 307 down in the bottom. 335 but we're talking about like right at the very corners uh one trouble spot that we always see with griddle cooking is typically about this much of the zone so we're just going to ride that line high 400s low 500s the whole way so i gotta be honest i mean i'm pretty impressed by the heat distribution I mean, the numbers don't lie. You can't sit there and knock it for that. That's for darn sure. All right, now we're hitting in the mid 500s, about 550 on average. Uh, when that happens, this happens very, very fast. We're looking about five, seven, eight minutes, something like that. You can see how much little smoke there is. Um, although I'm gonna do the third step, I'm just gonna repeat step two and three. Weber recommends doing it three times. I have no reason to argue with them, except the design. Same thing, just a light coat of oil. You don't want to add too much. Remember, thin coats. If it's uh, if your oil is pooling or bubbling, you've got too much. Just take the dry side of your paper towel and go in and get that up. So 
So now obviously there's a lot more smoke because you've got a fresh coat of oil that's burning off again. Yes. All right, some things that I've noticed while we've had the griddle on, we talked about how cool the shelves were. That's not the case for your front shelf. This right here, this son of a gun is hot and I'm talking about hot. That's one, two. I can already see it happening. I've been there, I've done that, I've seen that. I've been a part of it. The grease trap, although I've already thought that I liked it, I just wanna warn you, I'm just trying to get ahead of it. You gotta be careful when you pull it out, especially if you're dealing with hot grease. You're gonna pull it out, you're not gonna pay attention and see how it could tilt if there's too much in there. So just caution be warned. When you've got your grease in here, you need to be very cautious. Plus these aluminum pans get extremely hot. I have no idea how hot it would be on the bottom. So when you take your pan out, you still need to be comfortable or careful not to put your hand down there and not expect it to be hot. So that's just kind of like tit for tat. And last but not least, um, just in case you guys see what I'm looking at, can you get it on the camera angle? We've got welds. Uh, let's see. Popping up the little rivets. I highly doubt that's gonna affect the griddle at all. The bottom of the griddle is built just like the bottom of the Blackstone where it's got the long um, L-shape bars running horizontal. Those are welded pretty solid. Um, other than that, like I said, there's no really features. Uh, you see that our smoke's kind of like calmed down. Um, I'm just gonna apply a thin coat of oil once it cools down just a little bit more. And then after that, it's our first cook. So this is the deal. We've done um, cheesesteak for our camp chef, very first cook. We've done cheesesteak for a pit boss, the very first cook. We've done cheesesteak for the Blackstone, the very first cook. So guess what this gets? Cheesesteak. Thank you. Golly, honey, you're smart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, final thoughts? Final thoughts is you have been a Weber guy your whole life. Yep. Yep. Um, I think, you know, the design aspect of like how it looks. Ah. It, just, it just hurts me. Like, I love my Weber Summit Charcoal Grill. I know there's a huge price uh, variance, but you go, you kind of grow to expect that with a Weber, right? When the family's over, they look at it, they all want to talk about it. I just don't see much talking about it. I just don't see how we missed the mark. I don't know. I, but, you know, ultimately, it's just going to be the way it performs. Um, I'm going to be really tedious about the hot spots. I know a lot of people care about that how fast it heats up, how long it takes to cool down. I didn't feel like there's anything special about the metal of the rolled steel. It felt heavy for its size. Um, the thickness felt normal. Um, we're just gonna put it through its paces. So if you guys have any questions, comment below. If there's something you guys want us to make. What are your guys' thoughts on it? Am I being too mean? Uh, but the bottom line is just how I feel. I just think that Weber has set the bar so high uh, with outdoor cooking, um, just aesthetically, aesthetically, I just don't think it just wows me but ultimately it's how the surface is gonna react when we start cooking on it. And so far it seems like pretty even heating. That's, and you can heat one at a time and I wish people would come out more verbally and agree to that because, you know, it takes the pressure off of knowing if you're gonna warp it or not. Anyways, hey, thanks for watching. If you guys are nervous, we have a membership button down below. I mentioned earlier when I talked about y'all, yuns, how it works, the Griddle Group. Check us out on The Griddle Group on Facebook. That's where we got the feedback for a camp chef when we decided to sell our camp chef and we promised you guys that when the opportunity arose whenever that is we'll be back in the griddle game with a different feature a different idea a different griddle and here we are today thanks for watching don't forget da, 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 da. thanks for watching don't forget to press that subscribe button pound the notification button share it with your friends welcome to the family weber 28 inch griddle peace